Look who's back, our good friend Lisa Bakery with Springfield Sister Cities. We're so happy to see you. I'm so happy to be here. And we love our sister cities. Yes, absolutely. So it's that time of year, I can't believe it already, talking about the Kite and Pinata Festival, yeah. which means a lot because of our sister cities. So do you want to explain kind of what the event is? Absolutely. Well, we are delighted to bring this event every year. It's a celebration of spring and the relationship with our two sister cities, Isasaki, Japan, and Tlacopaki, Mexico. And so we celebrate culture at this event, too. Uh, with performances, with food, um, and then of course the kite flying and the cherry blossoms, which hopefully are still going to be in bloom on Saturday. I hope so. <laughs> I hope <Yeah>. so. <laughs> Look at that great oh. event. Oh my gosh, it's always so much fun. It really is signaling the first of spring. Yes. Really. It does, like this yeah. is the spring kickoff. It's the kickoff event for the spring season and summer and fall and all of that. And tell us about these pictures. Yeah, these are great. Yeah, so this is one of the cultural performances. That's Grupo Latino Americano on the screen right now. And they come and bring dances from the various um, states in Mexico. And then we also have Japanese performances. We'll have um, Kizuna, our Japan American Friendship Group, of course, always performs um, a Yosakoi dance team. And this year we're um, also welcoming a oh. Koto player. Oh, look at the baby. <laughs> dog. So dogs are invited. Oh, yeah. To dogs. The... Um, every event is family friendly and dog friendly, pretty oh, much. Love uh, it. Bring your dog on a leash and clean up after him. And yes, dogs are welcome for sure. How fun. And that's pinata whacking. So we fly kites and we do pinata whacking every 30 minutes. And it's just a lot of fun for the kids um, to be able to see all that candy fall to the ground. Uh huh. You know, that's one. There's a lot of cleanup after this event, but we never find candy on the ground. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's good. They're doing their job. That's They're doing right. their Those part. Those kids are doing a good job picking up the candy. This this might seem like a silly question, but how many pinatas do you have to pre-order and, and prep before this big festival? Well, about every 30 minutes. So I think we did about 11, just to be okay. 12. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah. Wow! That's yeah. and so again. Candy. The weather looks great this weekend. It does. Yeah. It looks so good. I'm so excited. Yeah. And and so it's this Saturday from what time to what time? It starts at 11, ends at 5. And then for people that are interested in traveling with us to our sister cities and or hosting delegates when they come, we have a just an informational meeting for 30 minutes from 2 to 2.30 inside the Botanical Center mm -hmm. uh, for travel. And then from 2.30 to 3, if you're interested in hosting a delegate from another country. Which is great. And this yeah. is, again, at the Springfield mm -hmm. Botanical Gardens. Right. It's beautiful. Now, again, we've had you on the show many, many times, yeah. but we always have new viewers. Can you just tell the importance of having the sister cities and why we have two and why they are our sister cities? Because we know, but we want the viewers to know. <laughs> sure. Well, um, Sister Cities International, <clears throat> excuse me, was a program that was started by Eisenhower after World War II. So there's many different cities in the country and around the globe who have sister cities. Springfield has two, one in Isasaki, Japan, like I said, which is a 38-year relationship this year. And then Tlacopaki, Mexico, which will be 21 years this year. And um, it just provides Springfield an opportunity to experience culture. Um, it provides an opportunity to meet people and make friends from these other cities, which we have a lot of friendships back and forth. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, we really feel like it adds to the quality of life in Springfield to be able to have that international connection and have cultural culture brought right to your uh, hometown, basically. Well, I was even thinking that when you said, you know, hosting uh, delegates, yeah. you know, how much you can learn from just hosting them in your home and how much they can learn in the give and take between that relationship. And those are bonds um, that, you know, you maybe spend a week or so mm -hmm. at, a, at a host family, and those are bonds that will be there your whole life. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, be, they become your family, which yeah. is uh, just an enriching experience. And because of these long relationships with Isasaki and Tlacopaki, right. what were the criteria to become a sister city? I know you've kind of explained before about population or... Yeah, it's kind of loose. I mean, they do look at population, they look at industry, they look at, you know, kind of how the school systems, the size of those and, and how those are run and that kind of thing. And it's basically the two cities need to agree to be a sister city. And um, it only takes the top official in each city signing a document to become a sister city. And Sister Cities International is kind of the organization that can bring cities together because they know which cities are looking for a sister city and, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So um, so it's, it's a little bit of loose criteria, but some of those factors are looked at. But you know, since we became a sister city with Isasaki, it's grown tremendously wow. so it's about 500,000 where Springfield is wow you know 100 and what 75 oh, wow. <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> wow so things change over time too, yeah obviously mm -hmm. yeah I have to ask how are our friends um 
with Canela. Yes, the, yeah. yeah, from Talakapaki. Yes, How are they doing? They're doing great. Oh, okay, yeah. are they going to be making a trip back to Springfield this year? Um, not for Taste of Talakapaki. This year we're going to do um, Mariachi Viva Jalisco, oh. and uh, we're going to do some real traditional. When you think of Mexico, you know the the ceramics and the mariachi, yeah. more of a traditional kind of uh -huh. taste event this year. Oh, that's, that's awesome. exciting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so this Saturday, let's give all the details yes. one more time. <laughs> because how much are tickets? Tickets are free. What? It is a free event. Hey. <laughs> See? Bring free. the whole family. Okay, yeah. and the event details one more time? Yeah, so it's at the Springfield Botanical Gardens right outside to the south of the Botanical Center. You can't miss it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a free event, uh, starts at 11, ends at 5, and the Mizumoto Japanese Stroll Garden is free that day as well. It just oh. opened yesterday on April 1st, so come see all the blooms at that beautiful garden, and the Great Campbell Farmstead will also be open for visitors that day. So it's a great day to just come out to the botanical gardens, enjoy the event, and go through the beautiful areas. And you can great great photos. My, one of my favorite places to take photos is at the Strolling Garden. It's mm. so beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and even this event has such great optics because it's yeah. performances on stage and all the kites flying in the background. Yeah. I just love it. It's perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa, yeah, so much. Thanks so for good to see you. Exciting for Saturday. <laughs> all right, coming up, we will keep the sweet treat train, sweet treat train going from yesterday with some. What? I tried to. <laughs> Trick myself. Yeah. We got some cosmic brownie waffles coming up. <laughs>